Hey everybody, I uh, thought I'd pop on and show you something really quick with Dacoart's Fluid Acrylics. This it has very quickly become my favorite paint that Dacoart makes. I absolutely love the high pigmentation, the transparency, everything about this paint. And it makes it fun, particularly when you're working over something like this. Now, you've probably seen this pattern, this design and wondered how it was accomplished. And I thought I would take a few minutes and show you how. This is actually very, very simple. It doesn't require any tracing or transferring. It doesn't require any particular major skill set, just the ability to um, float a little color. And you don't even have to be a great floater to do this well. Because you're working with a white base and because you're working with transparent color, you get to utilize the details that are already existing in the line drawing. And that can make it fun. It also makes it very versatile because you can use images that you that you like. So it doesn't even have to be from one of my patterns. Perhaps it could be from somebody else's. And you can utilize the line drawings from one of their pattern packets and create something new and completely different with it using this technique. So let me show you how this is done. You're going to start with a six by six artist panel and you're going to base coat it black. And then you're going to use your favorite stencil. It doesn't have to be a diamond. I used a Harlequin stencil for this, um, but uh, polka dots work just as well. Um, little checks, anything actually, just something to create a little background texture. Um, in this particular case, I used this half inch Harlequin stencil. And of course I used my Dynasty stencil brush. And uh, I used gold, um, this is Decor's Extreme Sheen on here, and just a little bit of rose gold just to change it up so it doesn't look like a solid color. I wanted it to look um, a bit distressed and a bit worn out. So you can see that the diamonds are not perfect. I kind of let them run out a little bit. So once that was done and that was dry, I took my line drawing and I went to my photocopier and I printed out a copy of my line drawing, like so. And then I cut it out. Now, in this particular case, the original one I cut out was a little too small for this surface. I didn't like the way it didn't fill up enough space. Uh, so I enlarged it a little bit by about 30%. You can see it's significantly larger. And then um, when I laid it in place, I wasn't really thrilled with the extra leaf. It seemed to take up a bit too much space. So I took my scissors and I cut out that extra leaf. And this is what I'm left with. So from that point, what I do is I decoupage this piece of paper directly onto my surface. And I did that with Decor's Matte Medium. So once that paper is decoupaged on there, and my process is very simple. I keep a bowl of clean water handy. I took my paper and I dipped it in the cool water to wet the paper. Then I brushed a nice even coat of the matte medium over the surface. Then I laid the wet paper into it. And then I took my brush and I smoothed it out so that it lays in. The reason that I wet the paper is that when paper gets wet, it stretches. If I don't, See, this one looks all right, but I want to tip this so that you can see it. There's some major creases in this one. This is what happens when you use dry paper. I want you to get a little closer. Do you see those creases? All those little creases and folds in the paper create some not so pretty textures. So by wetting the paper ahead of time and then laying it into the matte medium, the paper stretches. And then as it dries, it shrinks back to its original shape. And when it does, it lays nice and flat and nice and smooth. So you get a nice tight adhesion to the surface with no little loose bits, no bubbles, no drips, no runs, no creases in the paper. And it gives you a much nicer finish and an easier surf surface to paint on when it's dry. So once that's completely dry, you're ready to go. You can start adding color. Now, I'm using a little bit of Decorte Fluid Acrylic. The color I chose to start with is called Quinacridone Magenta. I love this color. It's really highly saturated, nice rich red, but when you thin it out with a little bit of glaze or water, 
you get this luscious pink. Look at that color. It's fabulous. Now, these colors, see how easily they blend on this surface? We are not looking for an utterly perfect float. So wherever you would ordinarily shade, you're going to put a little of this quinacridone magenta and then blend out the edges of that float. Again, neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. So you're going to tuck in some of that color. Look how pretty. I love this. And this is fast and easy to do. So you're just going to touch those colors in. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? You notice I'm going right over some of the line drawing, like the center of it. It doesn't matter. You're going to put some more color on there anyway. So turn that around. I'm going to come down in here. I notice I'm putting the darkest value towards the center of the flower. And then I'm going to pull that color out and blend the edges of that float. Isn't that pretty? So I've got one more petal to do. Tuck that in nice and tight. The other thing you'll notice, I haven't reloaded. I haven't picked up any more paint. I haven't needed to because I've got a little bit of um, water or glaze in the brush and these paints are so highly pigmented that the colors will move and they hold very nicely. Look how pretty. So now I'm going to go back and pick up a little more of that color and the float's going to be a little bit smaller down in here. So I get that depth that nice deep color down in there. Look at that. And again, just walk it out a little bit and then blend the edges of that float so that you get a nice transition of color. Neatness does not count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. This is a mixed media technique. We're not looking for crisp, clean lines and deliberate, well-executed floats. We're just getting some color in there. So you don't have to fuss too much with it. There's lots more color going in this yet, so there's no need to be too fastidious about it at this point. It's all about putting in layers. The more layers you put in, the more depth you get. So we're going to work until we get all of the depth we're looking for. So there's the quinacridone magenta. Nice and rich, bold pink color. I love this magenta. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And you can tell I'm not really using a classic technique for floating. I'm just getting the color in. That's all. So now I'm going to take that dirty brush and I'm going to um, tip into this color. This is quinacridone violet. Uh, it looks like a strong red, but it has a really rich purplish undertone, and it's ideal for deepening these shadings. So I'm going to tip into that just a tiny amount of paint. You really do not need a lot of paint when you're working with these fluid acrylics. Now this is where I'm paying a little more attention to where the shading is going. So right off the bat, I've got a lot more depth in those shaded areas. Look at how rich that color is. So get a little deeper in here. Love, love, love this quinacridone violet. Such a gorgeous color. But look how it deepens that pink. Now come around here. Again, look how rich. Oh my goodness. Love it. So right away you can see how deep and rich those colors have gotten just with those two colors and I haven't done anything over the top no you know a massively difficult technique it's just washing that color in so I'm going to rinse my brush out and now I think I'm going to come out to the edges of the petal because I want to richen this up a bit we're going to take a little of vermilion which is an absolutely vivid hot orange and I'm going to take that vermilion out to the edge look at this rich 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 color I love these fluid acrylics they thinned out with water you do watercolor techniques you can do traditional toll painting with them because of that transparency you get these gorgeous rich floats for shading for highlighting for accentuating color these are fantastic. 
And look how rich that is. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and deepen it even further. What I love is when these colors start to overlap and you see how each color is affected by the previous color. So I take that down so that it comes over top of that magenta and that quinacridone violet. And watch how it's affected. You get a richer and deeper and hotter orange out of it. Beautiful, beautiful. So fun. So I have um, a little of my favorite yellow in the fluid acrylic. I love diarylide yellow. It is the more opaque yellow in the line. Um, I would probably say it's more like a school bus yellow. It's that in your face, deep, rich yellow. That's my favorite yellow because it heats things up so quickly. It gives you this great heat, this great vivacious in your face yellow. And I love pairing it with this vermilion because it just adds more and more heat to an already hot color. So I'm gonna dip into that diorylide just so you can get a close up of, where's my camera, here we go. Just so you can see it, where'd it go? There it is, hello. Whoop, out of the shot. Okay, let's see if I can do this right this time. Hello, there it is. Look at that school bus yellow. It's super, super vibrant. So I'm gonna pop a little of that into this orange and you watch how that heat. Look at how that jumps. It just seems to intensify that orange just a little bit more. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Love diarylide yellow. So I'm just gonna keep going around on this, this petal, adding some of that orange. Look at that, I love it. This is gonna give you that nice hot, orangey, sassy, vibrant, in your face glow that you see in tropical flowers. Love it. Now you notice this is not, I'm not using a really difficult technique. I'm just pulling and moving the color around. It just, it's so easy to do. And I love how these colors interact with each other. Look how pretty that is. And we're not done, because we're still gonna add more red to this. But I wanted to get that center core done, that deep area on these flowers to get set the tone. You want that amazing rich red. Look at how pretty. I'm uh, off to Hawaii in May to go uh, play in their sandbox for a little while. And they asked me if I could create something for them. So I came up with a hibiscus welcome sign that says Aloha. And I absolutely loved how the colors popped. So I've, I've been kind of obsessed with hibiscus of late, thanks to my friends in Hawaii. Um, I've also been obsessed with birds of paradise, which is a flower that, well, we don't get up here. I mean, I live in Canada. We're lucky if we have, I don't know, four seasons <laughs> where I live, so... Um, the bird of paradise does not grow here unless it's in a greenhouse. So I've been kind of obsessed with tropical flowers. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love these colors. Look how rich and so fun. So now I'm going to start pulling that orange and that yellow just a little bit down in over that magenta. Watch what happens down here. Look at how those colors suddenly take on even more intensity. Beautiful, yeah? So fun. So lots and lots of heat. The great part about working with these, with these fluid acrylics, is that you can layer and layer and layer until you get where you want to be. It makes them just wonderful to work with. That transparency, that ability to set the tone, set the darkness, set the value, and then layer colors, one on top of the other, you get lots and lots of vibrancy out of it. 
Now, this is a simple piece. This is not rocket science, but it shows and demonstrates these fluid acrylics very well. Not to mention, it's fun to do. So we have all of these shaded areas to do, so that's when I'm gonna go back and pick up a little bit of the primary magenta. So when you look here in these areas, I'm going to pull a little primary magenta in there. Look at that. So there's your shading on that petal. Look at that gorgeous heat. Look at it, I love that. So much fun. Okay, so we've got our petals almost done. Now we can go in and we can pop a few little highlights in here too, um, using a little bit of the translucent white. There is a gorgeous translucent white in the fluid acrylics that is great for highlighting. But um, I wanted to very quickly show you the leaves. Now I'm using two values of green, well, two greens, two hues. Um, the first one I'm using is green gold which is this in-your-face, um, almost citron green. And then I'm going to use sap green, which is similar to plantation pine, except this one's much more transparent. Um, but it's a nice, dark, rich green. So I'm going to come down in here, and I'm going to pick up a little of the sap green on my brush, and I'm going to tuck that color into the shaded areas. Now, in this particular case, the line drawing has all these little tiny dots that indicate the shaded areas. So you just simply float a little color in those shaded areas. It's that simple. And then you do the same thing on the other leaf. You notice this color is very transparent. It's a great green though. Love this green. Just like that. Easy peasy. So we give that a couple of seconds to dry, and then we're going to take that green gold, and again, I'm just going to float some color. Now, let me see if I can get this in a little closer so you can see just how intense this green is. Look. So, look at that. It's an in-your-face, very high yellow green, but it works so nicely for this tropical type. Now I'm just putting a wash of that color in, it goes right over top of that sap green and instantly gives you that nice soft shading. Neatness doesn't count, perfection is to be avoided at all costs, and don't feel that you have to get it exactly right on the first shot, you don't. Because these colors are transparent, you can layer them in, so give this a chance to dry if you feel that the shadow isn't dark enough, take another layer of the sap green and go back in. Not going to hurt a thing. It's that easy to do. So now we have that little stem in the middle. I'm going to use my, um, I'm using a number two rigger, but you can use a liner, or something smaller. And I'm just going to throw a little color in there, like that. And I'm going to pull out some titanium white. Yes, there is a titanium white in the fluid acrylics. There it is. I'm going to use a little of that titanium white and the diarylite yellow. And I'm going to just put a series of dots along that stem. Come saw. Again, neatness doesn't count. I'm not too worried about getting it absolutely perfect. I'm just going to tuck that in like this. It's just dip dots. Then I'm going to get that dirty brush. I don't clean the brush out. And I go in and I pick up a little of that diarylite yellow and I just mix so that those little dip dots sort of all blend together, like so. And what you end up with is like two or three values of that vivid yellow. So a couple more things just to go back in and adjust color. I'm going to take that plantation pine, pop a little extra in here just to deepen those shaded areas. See how easy peasy? Now you can putz with this until you're absolutely thrilled with it. Or you can keep it as simple as possible. That's entirely up to you. The technique is simple. It's fun. You can't really do it wrong. I do love that I can go back and, and change things as I see fit. That I can deepen shading whenever I want to. There's nothing that says 
that it has to be utterly perfect. So that's it. That is as difficult as that gets. So you start out with your painted and stenciled background. You adhere your liner cutout line drawing onto your surface, add your color, and then I like adding this little embellishment with this dragonfly. Um, these are really great. The one I have planned for this hibiscus is this one. This is fantastic. These are made by Southern Ridge Trading. Absolutely fabulous laser cut chipboard. These are beautiful. This dragonfly has all the gears in it. She has one with a gorgeous lacy look as well. But I have this one planned for this. What I'll do, I'll hit this with metallics. I'll glue a small block to it so that it hovers over the surface of this flower. And that is it. It's so simple to do and so pretty. So if you get a chance, grab a few of these Decort Fluid Acrylics and give them a shot. I think you'll really enjoy working with them. I know I do. They very quickly become my favorite paint. Um, grab a jar of matte medium because this stuff is the bomb. It's the best stuff for doing decoupage, for uh, adding embellishments to your artwork, or just using it as a barrier coat to protect between layers. Fantastic product line. Thank you for joining me again today. I hope you enjoy this. Try it out. You can visit me on my website at Tracy Moreau Design at tracymoreau.net. And if you have any questions, I'm an email away and you can find me on Facebook as well. Have a great day.